we just guide the conversation, Lord, that we may grow in your grace and knowledge and use us, Lord, to bring glory to your name. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, those that, for you that missed last week, if you want a flyer, mm -hmm. it was we had quite the conversation. Mm -hmm. For those that... They are all online now. They're all online now? Okay, so there you go. If we, we did the Nephilim last week, okay? Did you get one? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. It was... Yeah, we're in Genesis 6 right now. Nephilim. Nephilim. Yeah. Nephilim. Yeah. Or there's four other tribes. The Anakim, the... Well, the Nephilim, oh, the Anakim, the Zanzumim. Actually, for those of you who asked me, you were, I'm going to step out of camera for a minute, okay? I, I hesitated to bring this, okay? It's called the Trouble of the Nephilim. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've it's got like, it. I, I've got that book. You got yeah. this book, okay? Yeah. And this has got a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. But the part that I find the most interesting in here, well, here's a picture of a man holding a skull, which they believe was from a Nephilim. It's a human skull, but look at the size of his head versus to the size of that skull he's holding. You know, they found Nephilim uh, on Catalina Island. Yeah, they found them in Ohio. They yeah. found them in Indiana. Really? They found them in man? Texas. Really? Huh? Yeah. That's human, yeah. Man, yeah. yeah. So yeah. in the Bible, if you look, who's got an NIV? Oh, John, you have an NIV. Look up Deuteronomy 3.11. We'll tell the punchline of the story from last week, then we'll move forward from there. Deuteronomy 3.11. 3.11. The NIV takes the time to calculate the cubits, so that's what's nice about, the, about, about that. But it tells, it, it tells about a man in the Bible, and this idea is scattered, not just, it's here, but it's that idea is scattered through, look at all the scriptures you have on oh, that yeah. piece of oh, paper, yeah. and that's only a third. I could have done three times that amount of verses about that. Wow. Um, interesting conversation. Are you there, John? Yes, I'm there. It says, only Og, king of fashion, was left of the remnant of the Rapha Raphi. Raphia. And yet. And he was made of iron and was more than 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. He, he slept in a bed that was 13 feet long and 6 foot wide. Why would the Bible take the time to tell you that if there wasn't these uh, beings? Right. Talking about a mass. You know I thought I slept in a king size bed, but I'm now a bed 13 <laughs> feet long. Wow. And so, yeah. but that, those little stories, little borps like that are scattered all throughout the scripture. What's a standard king? Like 80? <clears throat> Oh, I have no idea. Okay, so we're going to pick up in Genesis 6, verse 5. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Well, I'm six feet. My feet still have it. Oh, the king? Yeah. yeah. That's a good Google question. But. <coughs> yeah, but well, how long well, I'm, I'm six. Well, I was six four, but my feet are right at the edge of it. Yeah. 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 And I'm almost my head's almost into the head. Cow king, but he wants to go back to a king. Yeah. There is two different kinds. Yeah, yeah that's right. Cow king and regular king. It's six, supposed to be a little six five. So the last verse that we did, we kind of ended with verse four. These were giants on the earth in those days. In the NIV, it's going to say Nephilim. I don't know if you're what, what, what Bible you have, if it's got a different word. Translator in King James translated it, giants. The NIV, because the controversy, which I'm not going to read, we did talk about last week's lesson, but there's a controversy over this, and I gave all the different viewpoints. Um, they chose to just to put the word Nephilim in and leave it untranslated. So you, it could be however you think it should be. Um, it could be a society if you don't know it. <coughs> What's that? It could be if you're if you're not aware of it, you can look at it at it as a society, a name for a society. Well, that's why they did that. The Hebrew actually, if the word's a transliteration, you understand when I say that word? Mm -hmm. Because the Hebrew word is nephil, which means the fallen ones. So we say, well, the fallen angels. And I say, no, it's the fallen line of Cain, and you get it into all of these stories about this. So for them to translate that, they had to create a word. And so it's a transliteration. It's taking a word that does exist and creating a word in another language to be able to explain the word. So they took the word nephil and added the I am to it to make it represent a people like Diane was talking about. And that's why it's the nephilim. And so, but they left it untranslated where the King James did not. They translated giants. 
standard king mm -hmm. six foot four, so this was twice the size of a normal bed. Yeah. <clears throat> So yeah. that twice the size. Well, I don't think short people will sleep on that. No, <laughs> there was a reason why that bed is 13 feet long. Yeah. And there's that storyline through. So, picking up on that, we're going to go to the next verse. Okay. And then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. In the outline, I gave you a six point what I call a six-point outline. Pastor talk, preacher talk. Okay. So we see in this <coughs> the intensity of the wickedness. And the verse says, how great okay, is that wickedness <coughs> that God saw. And when he saw that, it starts off in that verse <clears throat> then the Lord saw. That's why I titled it this. Then the Lord saw. Now, <clears throat> Scripture speaks of the Lord like this many times and all throughout the Bible so we can understand. Um, we think in human form, okay? So it talks about the Lord saw the hand of the Lord. Well, the Lord's a spirit. Okay? He couldn't begin to convey, but he puts it in terms that we can understand. So when you see this, the Lord saw, yes, he, can, he sees all, he knows all. But I don't think he's sitting there like we are. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? But he talks in those terms so we can understand. Okay, we can understand that. So we have in that verse, and it parallels, Genesis 1. <clears throat> Remember in Genesis 1? And it said, oh, that was good. Yeah, they, you know, he got created this, and the Lord saw, and it was good. It was good. And it was good. And the Lord saw this, and it was good. And then he got down to man, and it was what? Very good. Very good. Thank you, Ed. Very good. And here we are, five chapters over. And the creation that God saw, the creation that God made, he's now looking down and seeing that creation, and he says, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great. It's not good anymore. It's not very good. It's not even good. It's wicked. Now remember, this is God. This is God doing the analysis, if you would, on the human race. This isn't somebody else that's saying, making the, you know, like the elder bat. No, this is God coming to this conclusion. And he saw this. Second, the, total of, the totality of the wickedness. Every inclination. I mean, all these words are in those verses. Every inclination. I mean, it's everything we think of. Inclination is the idea of motion and thought how you think and moving forward on our thought processes and how we lay it out and how we do things as human beings. So there is scheme in his mind thought of was nothing but evil. Wow. That's the same idea. Yeah. yeah. All of it. it even, if, even if the best thought, as the best Christian, can't even use it myself, the best thought I could ever come up with, and I put that up against the standard of God, I come very short. My thoughts are evil compared to his thoughts. There's a verse in Lamentations, you know, they didn't put it part of this, but Lamentations 4.1 talks about gold. It's talking about Israel, and they're talking about Israel in relationship to God. And you know, gold's supposed to be shiny and bright, and we think of gold, and that verse says the gold is dim. In other words, there, there's, there's a brokenness going on within that. And God sees this, and he looks at all of this. So he doesn't see this as good, great. Rather, as this whole evaluation is evolving, he's in how wicked man has become. Thirdly, the inwardness of the wickedness is of the thoughts of the heart. Now, that's deep. When you talk about the Bible and talks about the thoughts of the heart, that's your most inward, private thoughts. That's the thoughts that, you know, no one sees. That's some of the stuff you shove down. You don't ever want nobody talking. You don't even want to deal with it. Huh? 
had some of that in my own life come out of the angle. So I was like, no, 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 we're going to deal with this. Yeah, because yeah, then it starts coming up anyway. <laughs> See, God has done that for a purpose and a reason, yeah. I believe that. Yeah. And it's not because he wants to get a gotcha. Yeah. And we may feel like that at the moment. Why are you doing this, Lord? That's been shoved down there for so long. I don't even want to think yeah. about that. Yeah. He wants to breathe. Huh? Exactly. He wants it. Yeah. And so he's seeing all that. You know what? All these same characteristics we're see, there's, he's seeing there, they're all very much with us today. We're very much that way today. Mm-hmm. Our thoughts of the heart, the inwardness of those thoughts, and they're wicked. It gives a new a new uh, twist on when Jesus said it's in the days of Noah mm-hmm. in Matthew 24. Yeah. yeah. That uh, it's not just they were marrying and getting married. It was I think there was wickedness. I think there was uh, yeah. like what Lynn Marzulli's book says. Yeah. It's all what we're sitting hybrids seeds. and yeah, all, all, all of this stuff that they want to wipe out. Everywhere. And Bill had a great. He's not here. I'm gonna I'm gonna brag on your husband. So you tell him <laughs> late, later for me, okay? You get the baby, huh? Yes, but Bill said that whole thing about the hybrids was Satan's idea. He's trying to destroy the lineage of Christ. Exactly. Yeah. That's a powerful thing he said when he said that last year. How many remember him saying that? And it was like, yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, so you have this battle that rages on, okay? And then fourth, the exclusiveness of that wickedness. It was to the point that it was only evil. There was not a decent thought ever. Imagine. No, they can't. Because even that, but how close are we to that? But because we are so broken that we don't see ourselves like that. I was going to say, huh? We might be close. We might be closer to that stuff than we realize. But we don't see it as that. You can take a walk in my block, right up, right up and down my block, and you can understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because in all of our brokenness, and we think, you know, well, that's not so bad. From God's perspective and standard, it's bad. Yeah. Isn't that Christ and there's some good folks up once in a while? Oh, well, exactly. Well, we're going to see that even in, with this lesson tonight. We're going to see this in all of this tonight. So the, the exclusive of those, evil only, all the time. Oh, I didn't give out some scriptures. Oh, I, I skipped the scriptures. Who does my reading? Six, uh, well, we already did... Uh, uh, Six five. Take eight twenty. Genesis eight twenty one. Okay. I got six five right here, and I'll read it again. Is one and now, or are you going to? Yeah, what I'm going to is because I'm getting ready to touch on something. Okay. You're going to say, "Where was that? I didn't see that in there." It's in eight twenty one. Okay. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's the King James or the New King James. Thing. Powerful statement, isn't it? We can't even think a decent thought that man had evolved. That what God saw. That's what God created. What God says is good. This is good. This is good. This is very good. And He's watched the creation morph into something that's only evil. I mean, Eight twenty-one. Okay. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in His heart, "I will never again curse the ground for man's sake." Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. Notice what it says in that verse. We talk about he won't, he won't destroy, and they talk about the flood and after the flood. But he makes one statement in that verse about childhood. Read that part again, just that part. Yeah, Kyle. Um, okay. Of a man's heart is evil from his youth. From his youth or from his childhood. That same idea. So to some people, especially in our culture, Debbie, can I get you to look up Psalms 58.3? And be ready to read this one. Because we do this in our own culture, in our own society. We spend billions of dollars because we have this idea. Man, man is not basically bad. Man is basically good. And if we could just get them educated and get them to know more of what should be, all of that will go away. You know, that's a lie. That's a lie. If you have kids, you know it's a lie. So the idea, so some, 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 teach them not to be selfish. Some point to that verse will say, yeah, but see, it's a learned behavior because from birth, and then by the time they hit childhood, then you know, then it all they start patterning this evil that they've seen from somebody else, but they were basically good. 
That is not true. Mm -hmm. And I just, the scripture that gave was the one I just gave to Debbie, 58.3, Psalm 58.3. The wicked go straight from the womb, liars hear from birth. The wicked go astray from the womb. That's a hard one, isn't it? That little tiny baby is it, is it? That's the Bible says it's wicked. Well, there's there's somewhere in the Bible, too. I'm sorry, that there's no good. None of us are good. Um, look, look, look this one up real quick. I think what you refer to Romans 3.10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me get to it up. Are you going to say something, Chris? I, thought, I see the wills yeah, turn in there. I, know, I was just thinking, historically, you know, in that early church, there was also a movement where people believed that you could be living a perfect, sinless life. You know, that it's like, you know, like, what was that called again? What, are you talking about the holiness movement? Yeah, but before that, you know, like in the uh, 8 or 9. Oh, you're talking about way back? Yeah. There was a was a group that kind of went way off tracks and said the Gnostics. Is that no, you talking about? No. No, no. It was it was something else? But but there was a movement in the church also that the, believed that the holiness that movement is that same idea yes. that you could literally get to the part that you're so spiritual that you no longer sin. Yes. Ah. So it was not just outside. The oh no no no! That idea was very inside prevalent the inside the church. Okay. No, they don't so, believe. Well, they they got an interesting way. They get on more that. and more in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but yeah, no, I'm not talking about the ones for today that hold that. I'm talking about the old timers. Yeah. The old timers that when they, 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 they literally believed that you could get to be to that you could achieve a sinless nature. Well, well, the the sanctification, well, right? It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't ever totally achieve that here. I think we that last step is when you go off the glory and you finally get uh, and you finally get there. Well it, the, yeah. the Pharisees thought that all sin was outward and that if they just didn't do it outwardly that their heart didn't matter and Jesus was all of that idea them. see Gnosticism held to that idea yeah. that it's not that the flesh the flesh is the bad part yeah. your spirit's good so you got the spirit you, you believe in God so you're living by the spirit your flesh goes do anything it wants yeah, to do yeah. that's just the flesh but you're still okay because yeah, yeah. your spirit's fine <laughs> yeah. so they did it just the opposite way that the Pharisees did yeah, exactly the yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. Romans 310 I think is that what you were talking about yeah, yeah. you can't separate the two you can't, no. That's like trying to separate God from the Holy Spirit. Exactly, you can't. Okay, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Not one. None of us are righteous. No one's none one's of us righteous. righteous. The best of the best of the best of us. And, and there's another scripture that's going to talk about our righteousness as filthy, dirty rags. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was stood out for me is that God doesn't give you a case of degrees. He's not saying, okay, this is this evil than that. Uh, no. It's all and totally we, evil. And we do that too, don't we? Yeah, yeah we, we kind of grade on the curve. Okay, we do grade on the curve. <laughs> we do grade on the curve. Oh, murder, now that's a bad one. Yes. Uh, uh, sexual bad. sin, that's a bad one. Uh -huh. But that little white lie, little white lie. See how we even talk about these things. Huh? huh? The little white lie. Yeah, Jack, I can get you look up one? I just came in my mind that's on this subject. James 2.10. Look up that one. There's a good line and a bad line. Righteous line. Yeah. But we do that, don't we? Yeah. And we'll judge somebody else. We'll do something very similar. But, oh, did you see what that brother did? Huh? And we're close to doing the exact same thing. Huh? It's just something in this. James 2.10. This is a tough one. If your wife asks if she looks good, you say she yeah, yeah. <laughs> survival. That's a survival line. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even responding. Yes, here. Ready? Yeah, I'm going to take one. James 2.10. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. See, when we use that as the term to judge, the law, the do's and the don'ts, you can't do that, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. The Bible says when you use that as the standard, if you're guilty of one of the things of the law, you're guilty of all of that. Mm -hmm. I want to show grace and mercy, because I want grace and mercy. Okay. Where but by we? the same token, we have to tell the truth in love. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? And there's a difference telling the truth. I had a, a lady in my church, and she's dead gone now, so I can talk about her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sister Aura Dean, and she was a trip. 
And she was a godly, I mean, really godly woman, but she was pretty uh, legalistic too. And it's not that she, it's what she'd say, but she was, she was, you know, she was, she was one of those plain people, okay? She bunned her hair and she no makeup and the long dresses, and she was, but, I mean, she was, she knew the Lord. But how she, she could, what she was saying was absolutely truth, but it would slice you to pieces. There was no love in any of it. She was just, <laughs> go away in the name of the Lord. And just leaving a bloody mess everywhere she went. And the thing she said was true. I thought that they were wrong. It's about how she did it. Yes, the proof. And that, that means a lot. Bring the band aid. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So the fifth one, the cons constancy of the wickedness. It was all the time. There was never a moment the world that, that, that was in that there wasn't evilness. And the sixth, and that's why I wanted Kyle to read um, Genesis 8.21. The innateness, and that word innate is the idea that it's from, from birth on, okay? The innateness of the wicked is from childhood. Some point to that verse to say, see, no, it didn't say newborns, it's just childhood, it's a learned behavior. If we could just, you know, socially get it right and start doing these things and educate people more, all of this bad would go away. We need to read the Psalms. But then Psalms tells you, read it again. The wicked go astray from the womb, liar the ear from birth. Wow, that's heavy. And then you have, no, yeah, it's right in the notes. Yeah, it's in the notes. And then you have a baby and you find out your 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 baby is not a little angel but a viper in a diaper. Yes, I know. I know I'm on tape and my family thinks about you watching this. I'm going to tell a story on Renee. My daughter, there was about three years difference between Renee and Ronnie. You just talked about the other one. And so... I can't even remember what it was now, but Ronnie couldn't do it. I mean, he's just a baby. He's like, oh, this one almost just laying there, you know. And uh, Renee did something, I can't remember. So I came in, I said, Renee, what'd you do? I didn't do that. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he could move up. She's just a little, just the biggest, cutest smile on her face, and just love looking at me like that. And I'm, she's lying through her teeth. Huh? Aren't we, we all have that in this, don't we? Yeah. Was, um, <laughs> last week we had um, Ron, Ray and my grandson Justin together, and they were playing the picture of the toys, and they began to fight over the toys. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were like, what in the world? We like, I said, it goes to show you right there. He, George was, he did not learn this, Ray. He did not learn that from here. Yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't learn it from here. Yeah. He came it doesn't matter. with it. He was born yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. And I said, that's proof right there. You got two of these little bitty ones that ain't been taught hardly anything yeah. yet. Yeah. yeah. And yet they're fighting yeah. over yeah. mine, yeah. mine, mine, yeah. mine. Oh, yeah. 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 And try yeah. to take it. Exactly. And I said, that, that tells you right there that sin's been huh. working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. Sin's nature. Yeah. yeah. Now I know why they smile when they mess their pants. Gotcha. Diapers and diapers. Viper and a diaper. Yes, that's right. Someone else said God made them small so they wouldn't kill us mm -hmm. and made them cute so we wouldn't kill them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So, as we look at this and the lesson that comes in my outline, I said there's no escaping the indictment that unfallen man, the fallen. And we always want to say, yeah, but. Yeah. Yeah, but. Anything you put back past that but. I can say is, is, is you're trying to, is, yeah, that's not the Lord. It's, it's self trying to obtain and secure and to be. We, we don't have it in us without the Lord, work of the Lord. And even then, I think the very best that we offer is brokenness. When we think we offer all this stuff. And God knows it. That's why he loved us enough to come and die for us. But... We see this in this verses. So as we're reading verse 5 and reading all this, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, that every intent of the thoughts of his heart, there's the depth, all the way from the internal thought process, was only evil continually. That's powerful, isn't it? So we see that, you know, we're depraved. Whatever angle, and I put this, here's what I said, whatever angle you approach these words, you find depravity, 
and depravity alone. I don't care how you try to slice and dice that and make it look pretty. God is saying that's how depraved we are. Okay. I, I can tell you one thing that happened with me. Mm -hmm. that I didn't realize uh, when my son died uh, and I was killed in the car crash, I persuaded myself, you know, that I, I really would like this man to go to get, you know, sentence and court justice. That's why I persuaded myself. Right. And he got off in a technicality. He was a drunk driver. He was a third DUI and so on. When I heard that, I was so angry. Mm -hmm. I was steaming mad. And if I realized, I was not looking for justice. I was looking for revenge. But exactly. I told myself this whole long story. I was looking for justice. But right. that's not what I was looking for. No. So you, you can spin yourself a lot of stories in your head. We do that all the time. Yes. Yeah. In my own life in ministry, I've, uh, I've looked at things, you know, a certain way or, you know, have a, had an expectation how I thought they were going to be. And the more I tried to do and be what I thought I should be to achieve that expectation, the Lord just kept knocking it down and knocking it down. And through that whole time period, I kept hearing the voice of the Lord said, I mean, unless the Lord builds, the builder builds in vain. I know that, Lord, you can kick in any time. I'm, yeah. <laughs> that's where I was. I mean, I was frustrated. Yeah. You can kick in any time. I get it. So, but, but what are you doing? But he was doing exactly what was supposed to be happening with that little church. But see, I had an expectation for it to grow. And get big. We, all, we, have this, mm -hmm. we all have this innate idea of what we call success. Okay, mm -hmm. And some of us achieve it in life and others don't. And some of it, what God calls success is totally different than what we call success, okay? And I learned that in the little church over on Northern Avenue. And uh, that little church was mostly kids. I and mean, we had, you want to talk about a church, we had a Sunday school group that was unbelievable, yeah. But very little, few adults, you know, and I kept trying and reaching and trying, kept pouring into the kids. You know, they, you know, we had Sunday school and we had church, so there was no place for the kids to go. They were sat at the end and getting the same message as adults were. That's just how we did church. Northern and what? Where were you at? 80th Avenue. It's okay. outside of the street. Okay. That used to be a building that they overhauled engine, and it, 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 it was Linda, I, and a handful of people that wow. turned it into a little church. I think a Church of Christ is in there today. And uh, the church still goes, but wow. it's, it's a small church. Really, it's a chapel. You get 100 people in there, you're wall to wall in there. Okay. It's little, but it's it, it was it was what, what, what we felt, and I would have spent my life there. I just kept and all pouring in and pouring in, and all of a sudden, you know, people moved away, things changed, and all of a sudden, it closed. And I was really. Now this is what I've spent over ten years of my life, yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You, huh? Yeah. You, oh, the wickedness there! Yeah. I'm the preacher talking like that. Yeah. And it just closes. But over time, and uh, you know, the Lord was so gracious. He kept just yelling with me and working with me. And I was hurt. I was broken. I was upset. And it took me 20 years to get the answer to this. And some of you already know this story. Those kids grew up. Uh, David, little David, he was seven, eight years old, little boy. He teaches theology at Duke University today. Several of them went on to be missionaries. Several of them went on to be Christian counselors. One of them was a Christian counselor, Brad. Brad came to know Jesus Christ at the age of 16, got hit by a car on a motorcycle, and he was paralyzed from the waist down at the age of 18 years old. Mm. And he came alive for the Lord in that condition. And he teaches, he's actually the Christian counselor at Folsom Prison in California. Last time I talked to him, I said, don't you worry about doing that. He said, what are they going to do, beat up a guy in a wheelchair? <laughs> <laughs> but see, I was doing are. exactly what God wanted, but because I did not see that as success. You understand? Yeah. But God did. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And I've learned, if I've learned anything, when it gets real quiet between me and the Lord, he's trying to tell me, so when you get this space where it's just silent, okay, Lord, what's going on here, okay? I've often thought of God as an air traffic controller with all the, the blips of the planes, and he creates a spot where this one just comes right in and lands that you don't even think is going to happen. Exactly. You have no clue what's going on. He's totally cool. 
couple more scriptures I want to do. Who, who don't mind reading? John, want to do it? Jeremiah 7, 19. Romans 7, 18. 17, 9. 17, 9. What did I say? 7, 19. Oh, no. 17, 9. Thank you. Keep me straight. That might be a verse. What a verse is that? Yeah. Yeah. See, this isn't just some little... This idea is all through the scripture, how broken we really are. But we don't see ourselves like that. But you know, I think we really need to be able to admit to say, to say, you know what, yes, I'm a believer, I know the Lord, and I need Him continually, because I can't, without Him, I can do nothing. Yeah. You got it there? Yes. Okay. The heart is deceitful above all things, mm -hmm. and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Now notice what Jeremiah said, the heart. Say it again, the heart is what? The heart is deceitful, deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Beyond cure. Did you catch that? Yeah. Who can understand it? God can. We're seeing here that he depth, he reached the very depths of the it, as low and all that stuff is hidden in the heart. And then God said, Oh, I looked through man, I looked at all into the depths of how he thinks, and it's evil only. It's equal only. That's why we get a new heart and not a changed heart, right? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> exactly. I put it in a new heart. Yeah. 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 Not a heart of uh, yeah. not a flesh, not of stone. So then, if someone tells you they had a burning in the bosom, mm -hmm. you could probably give them that verse to look at. A burning in the bosom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the yeah, 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 so I, know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That's what they tell you. I say that also can happen by eating pizza too late at night. <laughs> That's why I told him he got mad at me. But I didn't tell him about it. Yeah. You can do that same thing by eating pizza too late at night. That's yeah, the burning in the bosom. Gerd. That's Gurd. Gurd. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's amazing what we do with stuff like that. But, that we're, how broken we are. Kyle? All right. 718. This is the Apostle Paul, by the way, is what he's getting ready to read, speaking. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells, for to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. Yeah. If you keep on reading that, that which I know to do, I do not. I do the exact and I do the very thing that I don't want to do, and I know is evil to do, and I do it. That's a perfect description of how all of us are. Yes. And we're still like that. Mm -hmm. The only change we have is what Jesus has done in us. Huh? I think I just went right. through that just a couple weeks ago with my sister. Here I am screaming at you, I don't want to be screaming at you, I'm hanging up now. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It's we your fault, dang it. Yeah, we do stuff like that, don't we? That's exactly what I said there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's true. So these things are true for all. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's your, there's your, yeah, Romans three ten, yeah. The rest of that's verses in Genesis. I want to take it through verse seven, and then we'll just we'll stop. I mean, through verse eight, then we'll stop. It picks up a different point, and we'll pick that up next week. So going back to verse six. Now this is quite a something to, to read because we you talking about a miss understood verse in the Bible is this one. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. We read that and let's remember God uses terms of the human terms so we can understand and right. give us a picture of how he's feeling. Okay? When we think we're sorry, we're sorry because we messed up. We've done something wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. Or in a moment of anger, I did something that I instantly. Have you ever said something the second it got out of your mouth, you wish you could just grab it all back? Mm -hmm. huh? oh, yeah. We all have gotten done that. Mm -hmm. And so here we, we have that same thing. God's giving us a picture. But I, I, I wanted to put a little explanation on your outline. And I put this as it does not mean that he made a mistake. Because he could not see what was going to happen. He did. He knew what was going to happen. He already knows it. Isaiah forty six ten. Yeah, that's huh? a great verse. Huh? Yeah. I'll look up another one. Okay, you, Isaiah forty six ten. <laughs> I'm working you tonight, Debbie. Okay. So it does not mean he made a mistake. 
But what it means, he could, that he couldn't see what was going on. Now, he knew exactly what, he wasn't surprised by anything. But what it does, like the, you know, how depraved we are, he knows that. That's why he sent his son to become sin for us, that we could become the righteousness of God in him. Notice where our righteousness comes. I can become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. My righteousness is not from me. My righteousness is in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21. But God is not amazed at what happens, but Isaiah 46.10. I declare it again from the beginning, mm -hmm. and from long ago what is not yet done, saying, My plan will take place, and I will do my will. Exactly. Right. Yeah. See, a prophecy that comes from the Word of God, then we say, Oh, that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. I guarantee you, at some point, it's going it to. Will it, it will happen. You cannot stop it. It's, and, and if, it, if, it, if we've read it right and we're saying it right, it's going to come to pass. And he understands this. But the reason why all this is going on and that pain and that sorrow, and he talks about grief. You know, there's other scriptures that talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I believe we can grieve mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the things that we do, and we just, just shut his voice off, mm -hmm. and we grieve him. I think about when he came, God took on form and came as Jesus. And he's outside of Jerusalem. And he's weeping for the city. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How many times, like a mother hen, have I gathered my chicks? Oh, and he was weeping over the city. Not that he didn't know what was going to happen. He got caught off guard. Because that's the kind of God that we have. He's not a distant, far away God. It pains him when he sees the pain that's in us. But you don't see that in Jesus praying at Gethsemane. And he sweat. And there's another one, perfect blood. one. To pray to the yeah, point that your drops of blood. Yeah. Take this cup from me. Yeah, and no. he just the grief that he had, knowing that well, this okay. would be the only way. Right. And how sad for yeah. us. Yeah. How sad for us he was. Yeah. Well, actually, the, the him going on the cross was the greatest achievement in, in exactly. the history he said of the world. Exactly. He, he, he knew that yeah. already too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was still just the sadness that he had yeah. that we had this wickedness and just yeah. couldn't see. Uh, he, there was no other way for him. Have, have you ever had seen your child do something, or yeah. you know, oh. or have something happen, oh, and it just breaks your heart to oh. watch what they're going through? Uh -huh. Huh? You've ever had a, you know you had a moment like that with one of your children, and you know it's going to destroy them, and you know, and there's nothing you can do, and, and, and it just pains you to watch that happen. Yeah. That's how God sees us. Yep. That's the kind of God He is. He's not just so far away. He's a very involved God. He's very much a part of our lives, and all of that wickedness and that brokenness. It brings this sorrow to him. Yeah, it grieves it? him. That's what's in that verse. Mm -hmm. you know, every pain that we've ever had, every pain that everyone has ever had, he bore that in, and experienced yeah. that. And, uh, uh, you know, take on all of the pain. Yeah. The only time he didn't call his God Father, God Father was that when he was on the cross, my God, my God, why? My you Can you imagine, though, that mm -hmm. the eternal... Whatever that is, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yeah. that eternal yeah. Godhead, okay, to be fractured from that union. Yeah, yeah he had never known, yeah. never. We see, we count in time. He's outside of time, eternal. Jesus never had an absence from the Father until he stepped into time, mm -hmm. and on that moment, he experienced something that he never experienced before, the absence of the Father and the Holy Spirit. A lot of scholars think that he gave up a lot for Oh eternity. my gosh. Uh, he gave up, he gave, whatever that state is, yeah. we don't, we can't yeah. even, we can't even put our arms around that. Yeah. We kind of try to talk about it, but we can't. Whatever that was, he gave that up for you and all. And there's only one man-made thing in heaven. It's him. Scars. Yeah, scars, scars. yeah, yeah. But he's there in heaven in the body, too. So people get that one. We have a man at the right hand of God. Yes, he do. He's the God man. John Stott said this, and I put this in my Bible a long time ago, and it's perfect that we kind of got on this tonight. You know who John Stott is? He's a theologian oh, yeah. of the 20th yeah. century. Yep. He's dead now, but one, probably one of the most brilliant theologians yeah. of our time. Great man of God. Here's what he said about this whole thing. The incarnation was a historical and unrepeatable event with permanent consequences. Reigning at God's right hand today is the man, Christ Jesus, still human as well as divine. Though now his humanity has been glorified, 
having assumed our human nature, he has never discarded it, and he never will. John Scott. That's a powerful statement. You just think about that. So, yeah, a lot of things have changed for Jesus then because, like you said, in eternity he was a spirit. Yeah. So then he, he got a body now, and now from now on, he he's in a body. body. And also the glorified body. Yes. That's the first time that happened. Yeah. Well, that's so what he's talking about, the scars. The only yeah. fan made, and that's a guy like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's those scars, and the, they're still there yeah. in that body. Remember he showed all that? Yeah. But he took on a form. He took on a form from that point forward that never to go back to what he had before right. wow. that he turned he the Did you see that? Our glorified body's going to carry all of our scars. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but it does for him because yeah. you know what? That's that's what saved us. The lamb that he was slain. <laughs> the lamb was slain. Yeah. That's why he's showing up. Yeah, yeah. But that's powerful when you really understand that. I said, well, every time times people well, I wonder what the glorified body is going to look like. Uh -huh. Well, if it resembles anything like Christ, it'll be scarred. Yeah. <laughs> Not when he comes back, according if you read Revelation, yeah. he's going to come back looking a little differently. Oh yeah, he's coming back. That's a whole, that, that's a whole other subject. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he is. Thank God we won't yeah. be here to see he's that. He's coming back in judgment. Mm -hmm. My glorified yeah. body is probably going to be a lot better looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But see, we can't, we, we, we can't put our, but that's, <laughs> that, that's how much he loved us. Yeah, that's how much he loved us to put himself through all of that and to alter his state forevermore. He's, Christ sits at one place, in one place only, at the right hand of God the Father. Now he's still manifest, you say, well, I step to Christ. How do we do that? Through the person of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that moves into you. Huh? Because God is every you go all the way out to the end of the galaxies and God is there. You see, we can't wrap around, huh? The Holy Spirit is there. Jesus Christ is not. He's sitting at one place at the right hand of God the Father in an eternal glorified body. And he intercedes for us. And he thank you. Absolutely. And he intercedes for us. That's the kind of love he has for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's, that's, a, that's a word from the Lord. That's the kind of the, the Lord has done for us. He intercedes for us every single day. Mm -hmm. That's powerful stuff. That's actually hard to even co contemplate. It is hard to un contemplate yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. It, it, there's it, someone up there yeah. saying Ron Stoneburner. Yeah. You know, or Ed Higgins. Like, yeah. It's just that Jesus Christ would for each of us. Yeah, every last one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Isn't it? it is. Well, I hope you got something out of that. So we're going to start next time week at uh, Genesis six seven. We're making a little bit of progress. <laughs> so, uh, the right. of, yes. You know, this is off the topic, but now the Bible says when we absent from this body, we bring Christ. Yes. So are the people who died. That's a whole other subject. I'll say this real quick, okay? And I alter a particular view. You can find it, and we can find that in Matthew. Um, start reading from 24 through 26. Jesus went into the grave, okay? When Jesus arose on the third day, not only did he come out of the grave, he brought all the Old Testament saints with him. They were down in a holding area called Shoal or Paradise, as he told the guy on the cross. Today you will be with me in Paradise, which is the realm of the dead. And in that realm of the dead, you had the place where God's people went, and then the ungodly went. There was a great gulf between them. They could talk across that thing, but they could not cross over. Christ rose on the third day, and they, they, they that was with him, they came out of the graves. Old Testament saints, okay? And that's why it talks about that's the first resurrection. And when you talk about in Revelation, those that have taken part in the first re re resurrection you don't have to go out through that because they're already there. Now, the rest of us that have died since the cross, our body goes in the ground. Our soul goes back to God. We're in a spirit form. But on that coming, there's coming the day that body and soul is going to come back together. You find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The, the, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those bodies are coming out and the souls are coming back together. And we'll all stand before God in the flesh. So all the, the people who have been Christians are in spirit form, but with Christ and God the Father. Yes. Because Christ is next to God the Father. Yes, he's there. there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're there, but they're not in body yet. On the New not Testament saints, right. they're still waiting for that mm -hmm. process to take. Now, the whole teaching on that, and I kind of wrapped that up. Did you get what I said? I hope I didn't confuse you. No. Uh, 
There's a whole teaching on all this stuff. Okay. It's gonna be a long line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope so. It's gonna move pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, you can even get through a pretty quick. We want a no contest. What they're doing? They're preparing us. I don't think we're gonna care. Yeah. No. Good conversation, guys. I enjoyed the input. Good conversation. Who wants to close this out in a word of prayer? Anybody? Tell me. John, will you close this out? Father, we give you thanks and praise that, that you ever live to intercede for us. Yes. We thank you for your gift of salvation, <clears throat> that uh, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Yes. Help us to have your thoughts. Help us to have revelation. Yes. Help us, Father, to uh, not be self-righteous, but to find your life living in us. Father, we know that the thoughts and intents of our hearts are, are towards bad things and and towards even deceiving ourselves. Please help us to walk in truth and light. Help us to give glory to you. We give you glory and thanks and ask that you be with us as we leave and help us to uh, have your mind and thoughts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good conversation, guys. Kyle. Well, you're thinking about God being agreed.